So like I mentioned at the end of my previous video, I am done with floppy disk drive related nonsense for a while. Ignore these. <laughs> uh, as evidence of that, the Amiga banner is back up where it belongs. Um, so as I was getting ready to transition to some other things, I realized <sighs> September is coming up really fast and I want to get on the Septandi bandwagon, see if maybe I can generate a little bit of extra traffic to the channel. Um, so I had a bunch of Tandy related things that I wanted to do videos about anyway. So I decided I would just bump that stuff up to the head of the queue and all right, well, we'll, we'll see how that works out. But first, I wanted to do a quick summer pickups video because over the summer, I've picked up a lot of stuff. Now, I'll forgive you if you think, hey, some of that stuff looks familiar. Is he just recycling the same old junk? So this is a different <laughs> AT&T PC6300. I almost didn't get it, but it's got some cool upgrades in it, so I, I couldn't let it buy. I'm definitely gonna dig into that in great detail in a video later. Um, so I just wanna go over some of this stuff kind of quickly. Um, I'm gonna get to doing videos of most or all of it eventually, but there's a bunch of hashtag months coming up that I'm gonna try to do special videos for. So I don't, I don't know how long it's gonna take me to get to some of this stuff. And I didn't wanna just let it sit and collect dust. So I thought I would, uh, I would just tease you all with it a little bit first. <laughs> so yes, this is another AT&T PC6300. You'll notice there's two monitors with this, which is a little bit weird. Uh, they're not both connected to it or able to be connected to it at the same time. It's not that cool. Uh, this monitor is the color version of the monitor that I got with the other PC6300. This monitor is a special monitor that goes with an upgraded graphics card that's in this. I do also have the original graphics card. So this guy has some, has some interesting upgrades that I'm gonna dig into in great depth later. I'm expecting probably that I'll do some of this for DOS Sember a little bit later this year. Uh, this unit also came with the manuals. It's not quite as nice as the other one that I have. So I'm probably going to harvest some of the cool bits out of this one and put them in the other one. Um, and then, and then pass this on to some other collector, like, you know, sell this to, to someone else. Cause I definitely don't need to. <laughs> so this is another primitive 1970s home computer in similar vein to the Kim one. Now it's not as rare or as well regarded or as special to people as the Kim one is and certainly nowhere near as valuable, but it's still a pretty cool little device. Instead of being based on the 6502, it's based on the somewhat older 6800. I was really excited to start working on this next, but with all the hashtag months coming up, I'm gonna be pretty busy doing videos for all of that. So it's probably gonna be quite a while before I get to this. I definitely want to power it on and I want to program on it and I want to try to expand it with some other chips, maybe a sound chip or some other you know, primitive kind of IO chips to be able to get data in and out of it instead of just having to bang on the keypad. But that's gonna have to wait. I will definitely get to this eventually. Now, when I spotted this little odd thing, it was actually in two pieces separated. And I saw this and I thought, well, that's weird. This looks an awful lot like a 16K RAM expansion for a ZX81. I had no idea what this was. I had never seen one of these and I couldn't find very much information about it on the internet on my phone. So I just went ahead and bought it. It was fairly inexpensive. 
and it is in fact a ZX81 clone, and that is the 16K RAM expansion. So that's kind of a, a neat thing. I do have the power supply for it. I just didn't didn't dig it out. Uh, at some point, I'm also going to get into this. I've never even tried to power it on, so I have no idea if it works. <sighs> Someday. So this is a couple of aging, very filthy Sun Spark stations. Uh, I used some systems very, very similar to this back in the day while I was uh, at university. But it's been a long, long time since I've done anything with any of these kind of Sun workstations. All of my Unix-like experience in the past 20 years or more has just been Linux. And then a little bit before that on PTX when I was still working at Sequent. But that's basically a whole lifetime ago. We won't talk about that. I've already powered both of these on. The CMOS batteries, it's called something different in a spark station, but it's the equivalent is dead in both of them. So the spark station five boots up and because the battery is dead, it's lost all of its settings and has no idea what its boot device is. So it won't boot up. The 10, well, the 10 is about as gross on the inside as this keyboard is on the outside. So it's going to need some repair work. My plan is to tackle both of these for Unix Tober. I might have some other stuff also during that month. Um, we'll see if I get to it, but I'm definitely going to play around, play around with these. Now this gem is a North Star Horizon CPM computer with a ton of boards inside. I haven't opened it, I haven't turned it on, but it's got two drives that say quad capacity on them. So I'm not sure what capacity that actually means. Uh, Double-sided double density, perhaps, not sure. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. I do have some CP a CPM software disk. No idea if it's still any good. And a huge pile of documentation for it. I got this at the same stay at sale where I got the, the Heathkit computer that I showed earlier. The box containing the manuals and the software was in a bedroom in the house, like an office. And this was in a dark corner of the basement underneath a pile of VCRs. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. Like they were far apart, had no idea that either of these items were gonna be at that particular sale. I knew the Heath kit was there and that's what I was going for. But you know, as usual, wandered around to see what else was there and came across this beauty. Someday I will get this powered on and I will make a video and tear it apart and look inside and, and all that goodness. but. Uh, it's probably going to be next year at this point, along with the Heath kit and a bunch of the other stuff. These are a set of drives that, as far as I have been able to determine, are compatible with the Tandy TRS-80 Model 1 computer if you have the expansion module for it. It turns out I have one of those and well, maybe we'll wait until the next item. But I, I picked these up. I have no idea if any of them work. Hopefully I'll be able to get at least one or two working ones out of, out of the deal, but I don't know very much about them. And what is that other item you might ask? Well, let's see if I can show it to you without throwing out my back. It's a Tandy Model 1 16K Level 2. So level up, I guess. I got this and the disk drives that potentially go with it and the PC6300 and some other miscellaneous, less weird stuff at the same estate sale. I completely filled up my Prius. <laughs> it was very ridiculous. 
I haven't even really taken it out of the box because inside the box, there's more boxes. The reason this box is so huge is because there's the computer, the expansion, which you can kind of see hanging out back there, perhaps, and a giant box with the original monitor in it. I think there may be some other little bits of stuff floating around, but I haven't really dug into it yet. That's literally going to be the next video that I film is the unboxing of this and taking a look at it. So I guess I'll see you all in Septandy.